Hi, I'm Ron Bates, Senior Pastor of The Light Church. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast today. I hope this message inspires you to love God, love people, and shine His light. Would you give God praise for those baptisms? Isn't that awesome? Hey, I want to thank you for your giving, and if you are giving today, there's envelopes in the back of your seats, the white envelope there for your giving. Also, there is a yellow envelope in the back of your seats for giving. You can also text 84321 to give, and the yellow envelope is for the Kids Light Building. How many of you excited about getting a Kids Light Building built? (laughs) Matthew 19, 14 says, let the children come unto me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. You know, I'll tell you, this has been something on my heart, our heart, for a long time to get this kids' light building built. And I, I tell you, you know, when you look at the, the time, the, the social climate, just the time we're living in, we need to instill in our children, let them come unto him. Amen? And I'm excited about that. And as you know, we've had some challenges with permitting. Uh, the building's going to cost about $1.4 million, but you know, we've already had $260,000 come in towards the building. And what we've had to go ahead, give him praise for that. As a matter of fact, that's almost 20% of the overall uh, loan total that we are, uh, that we've already received. But do you know, we haven't even had to touch the loan yet because of your giving. We've been able to do that. And how many of you want God, want to see God pay for this thing? Amen. So, uh, so yeah, we've been praying for that, but I do have some good news to share with you today. We have a permit. Come on. We have a permit, and we are, look at that. See, that's, oh, this over here to your right is the new Kids Light building. If you notice, there's going to be a walkway from here to there, and just all in-house here. I, I appreciate so much our Kids Light and what they're doing with our children, uh, children and they are, uh, you know, busting the seams over there, so I'm looking forward to that, and uh, let's just give God praise for that again. So listen, just be, uh, we're thankful for your faithfulness and giving. It's making a difference. And I'm just excited about what God is going to do in the lives of these children and families. Amen. So with that said, would you give Pastor Steve a warm welcome as he comes to the stage? Good morning. morning. I got to get this out of the way. Y'all know I'm a walker, so I got to cruise back and forth. I got to get stirred up and I can't stand still. What a morning it's been, right? Amen. Baptisms. One of these days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell Jim he's got the day off so I can, I can do baptisms. So that's one of the coolest things uh, that I, I love doing baptism. What an honor it is. And what an honor it is to get up here and share the stage and, and share the word with you guys. Pastor Ron Ava, thank you for having me up. What an amazing honor it is to sit under you guys and get to share the stage with a great teacher like Pastor Ron. So a good pastor takes who comes up here very serious. I don't know if y'all know that or not. They're not gonna just turn it over to anybody. So the fact he's had me up here two or three times, I don't know. Well, <laughs> so, but I'm honored to be up here, so thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, and, you know, he brought a, uh, he started a series last week called Solid Ground, Standing Stable in Unstable Times. And what a timely message. I think we need to hear because, I mean, Turn on the news and you'll see some unstableness. Turn on the news, you'll see some craziness. Read a paper, whatever, just go out in your front yard and talk to your neighbors. You'll hear about all the crazy that's going on, right? And it's crazy. Some of it's just complete lunacy, to be honest. Things that I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. I gave up a long time ago saying, oh, that won't happen or that'll never get passed or that we won't have to deal with that. I gave up, a, I got proved wrong too many times, so I just quit saying that. Okay, but here's the deal. There's been crazy wave after crazy wave after crazy wave since the beginning of time. And there's been chaos, there's been turbulation, there, there, there's just been everything that, that could possibly go wrong has always been going wrong, right? But one thing has stood still, stood, stood firm, stood standing, has not wavered, has not changed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our God of miracle, right? Amen. So he was the same yesterday, to, uh, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Doesn't matter what kind of crazy the enemy can stir up to try to crash against the house. He's still standing, right? Amen. So what a, what a great message and, and how to do it. And Pastor Ron did a great job of uh, illuminating the need for a solid foundation, whether you're building a house or, or you're building your life, what it stands upon has to be solid. 
It can't shift, it can't waver, it can't be moving back and forth. It can't seem okay at, at one moment, but what is on the inside will actually decay and not be able to stand the test of time. So I might get through a little bit of it okay, but then when uh, what's underneath, and it looks okay on the surface, but what's underneath starts to crumble. Then what I'm standing on starts to wiggle. And then the next thing you know, I'm, I'm all over the place, right? But he taught us that, that the word of God is truth. There is no other truth. There's nothing that can come against it. There's nothing that can argue against this. The word of God is truth. It is that solid, solid foundation. And Jesus, it says, the word became flesh and the word dwelt among us. He is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was flesh. Amen. The word was with God. Okay. He's our rock. He's, he's that solid foundation. So he pointed us to that and what, you know, that was the great thing. So where do I stand? What, it, what will stand stable? This word hasn't changed since it was, in, since it was given to him. So it, it hasn't changed. It can't be disputed. It can't be argued against. It can't be proven wrong. It stayed the same, right? Okay. So stand on his word. Okay. Got it. Well, I need to stand on his word. Well, you know, I've got young kids. Most of you guys know we got three young kids and, you know, we're teaching them not to run out in the road, to stop at the edge of the curb and look, do kids always listen? No. Have we told them time and time again, this is where you stand. Stop here and you'll be safe. Stop here, check it out, see what's going on. If you stay here, you'll be safe. No, we want to, boom, they run right out, especially Josiah. He just, boom, right on up there and I'm snatching him by the arm in the parking lot, going to academy uh, yesterday. Stay here and boom, there he goes. I'm like, catch him by the shirt right before a car comes. Okay, does he know? Have I told him? So it's not enough to just know where to stand. There comes a point where I've got to make the choice and take the actual action and put my belief into work that if I stand here, I'll be safe. There's a time that it comes, I've got to, okay. So you tell me this is the truth. It will, it will hold me up, it will, it will lift me up. It will cure me. It'll do all these things. Then there comes a point where I got to do what it says. I got to engage it in my life. I got to let it be the filter that I pour my decisions through, the backboard that I bounce things off of. If I stay here, I'm safe. If you go out there on your, you go out there on your own, you're putting yourself into harm's way. Amen? So there comes that point. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm calling today this message, uh, message Standing Firm. Standing firm, so, uh, so standing firm on solid ground. That helps us what keeps us stable in unstable times. Father God, we praise your holy name. We thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to come sit at your feet. To let your word work on us. To let your Holy Spirit Guide us and direct us and reveal all truth. Your word tells us that the Holy Spirit is there to reveal the truth to us. Have your way today, Holy Spirit. Let your transformational power go to work on each and every one of us. Starting with the speaker to the hearer. May it be your name that's lifted high. May it you that be, glor be, be the one glorified. Father God. Have your way in this time. Do with it only what you can do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so how do we stand firm? If you'll flip over to Ephesians. Ephesians 6, very popular verse. We've heard lots of times. But it's going to kind of set the stage. Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Okay, see when I stand on his word, then I'm standing in his might. I'm standing on his strength. Because quite frankly, it wouldn't take a very big wave to come in and knock me down and sweep me back out to sea by my might. But when I stand on his word, when I stand in what he has said, do, don't do, when I stand in what he has said for me, then all of a sudden, He's, I just got this picture of him behind me holding me up. Amen. Amen. Or like the father that's in the pool trying to uh, coax the kid to jump off the, to jump off. And you're like, don't worry, I got you. So in this raging sea that's, that's crashing against my shores, I see him going, don't worry, I got you. I got you. Okay, because it's by his might. 
Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day, having done everything to stand firm. When I take on the full armor of God, and that's a whole nother teaching, we know, but whenever I take and, and, and I take all that he has for me, everything that he's provided me, and that's what I decide to walk in, not just take a little bit, well, I like this, and this is convenient for me, but I'm gonna do it my way over here. No, all that God has for me. When I take that, there's no wave that's gonna crash against me that's gonna take me down, okay? Okay, we're just kind of setting the stage here. Flip over to Matthew 7. Pastor read this verse last week, but I feel it's, yeah, use the word foundation, kind of a foundational scripture for this series. Matthew 7, uh, 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house and yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house and it fell and it was a great fall. It says it was a great fall, okay? All right, we've heard that in two totally separate outcomes but identical parts to both foundations, okay? He says, notice, the one that knew the words, it didn't say that he didn't have any storms, did it? No, it says the same storms, the same wave of crazy, the same chaos, the same troubles came crashing against that house, but it was still standing. The same waves, the same trouble came crashing against the other house fell. But what I feel is even more significant is both of them heard the word. It wasn't that the guy that stood, oh, he knew something that the other one didn't. No, this is Jesus talking. Listen, it says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them. Or, verse 25, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them. So the one can't play stupid. The one, the one can't say, well, I didn't know that that's what I was supposed to do. It's the same word of God that both of them heard, but one of them chose to activate and say, no, I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna act it out, I'm gonna abide by it, I'm gonna live it out. What's gonna come at me, and it's gonna come at me. There's times that our harbors are calm, that there's nothing raging against us, but stuff's gonna come. It says that we're battling against spiritual forces. It's 24-7, okay, okay? But the one that said, you know what? I hear this, I believe it, I believe it's true. I know that I know, I don't understand it all, but I, I believe it. So I'm gonna act upon it. The first thing I've gotta do, if I'm gonna do this, first thing I gotta do is, is understand and make the decision that this is the literal word of God. It's if he's sitting knee to knee, face to face with me, and he's talking to me. The word tells me it's alive, it's active, it's talking to me. And he says where my little pea brain doesn't get it, he's gonna put the Holy Spirit on the inside of me to reveal the truth to me. So if I can't, I can't play stupid again because the, the author is inside of me going, no, this is what that means. Right? So, therefore, so I, I have to believe that. And I have to believe that from this cover to this cover, is all true. I can't pick and choose and I can't say, well, I've got this agenda and this thing and this scripture really supports that, but I'm just gonna kind of omit some of these. No, I can't do that. I gotta take the one that says yes, the one that says no, the one that says stay, the one that says go. I gotta believe it all, right? I gotta take it all, okay? So, Flip over to James 1. James 1, 25. But the one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, 
This man will be blessed in what he does. Okay? The one who looks intently upon it. The one that says, what should I do here? How should I do this? How should I treat my wife? How should I treat others? What should I do? Where should I go here? Should I start that ministry? Should I? The one that's going to say, you know what? I'm going to look in here and figure out what it says. Because I've decided that this is the backboard. This is the thing that I'm going to bounce everything off of. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look intently. I'm not just going to hear it on Sunday and then walk out of here and forget what it said. Right? Pastor talked last week about the guy looking in the mirror and walks away from it and goes, wait a minute, what do I look like? Okay? I can't say that this is what I do and this is what I believe if I don't then therefore act upon it. Okay? I can can buy some cowboy boots and a cowboy hat and say I'm a cowboy. You can probably tell by looking at me, I'm not a cowboy. Okay? So if I say I'm a Christian and I say Jesus is my Lord, then I need to start walking like it. I need to start acting like it. I need to start making some decisions based off of what he says. Amen? Okay? And see, but here's the deal. My obedience and my, I I don't have a part to play in his truth. My obe- his truth is not dependent upon my obedience. His truth is truth. Whether I choose to accept it and activate it or not, his truth is truth. But it's whenever I say, you know what? I believe that, and I believe it with my whole heart. I'm going to step out in faith on that, or I'm going to stand and I'm not going to move. No, this is not okay in our schools. No, this is not okay in my home. No, this is not okay. Whenever I make that stance, I unlock the power of God in my life. That's whenever whatever I go to do, it says we'll be effective. You'll be an effectual doer of the word. When I try by my might, then it's up to me. It's by my strength. That doesn't, that doesn't bode too well most of the time. But whenever I do it based on his word, it will be effective. And it says I will be blessed. Do I believe that scripture? Do do I believe the other ones? Do I believe that one? If you do what I say and how I say to do it, you'll be blessed. I got to believe that one too, right? That one kind of sounds like a good one to believe. I'm I'm, I'm liking that one, right? Okay, so I've I've, I've got to take the whole thing and I've got to bounce it. it, Little things, goofy things. (laughs) I was praying the other day. Gretchen wound up staying home because Josiah was sick, but... You know, I was like, I'm wanting some new golf clubs. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I, didn't have to, I didn't have to pray. I mean, if I ask Gretchen, the, an, you know, the answer is no. But, um, but, you know, I said, Lord, should I buy some new golf clubs? He said, no. I was like, can I buy some used ones? Because the ones I'm playing with are like 17 years old. He's like, yeah, you can get used ones. So, so I'm like searching eBay every day. Like, eh. I haven't told Gretchen that the, thus saith the Lord yet, but okay. <laughs> um, but a, a good example is King David. Okay, we all know King David, great figure from the Bible, anointed king at a young age, killed a giant, made commanders uh, of an army that was one of the most successful ever in history, right? And we read Before he went into battle, what would he do? Every time, he would seek the Lord. He would say, Lord, should I pursue? Will you give them into my hands? Will we be victorious? And he says, yes, pursue. I will give them into your hands. He goes, victory. Ah, Imagine that. Wait, this time, don't go this way. Go around the mountain and come at them from the other side. Okay, come around from the other side. Victorious, yay. Okay, he, way he sought the Lord, he intently said, what does the Lord have to say? And then he did it. It's a pretty simple formula, really. <laughs> Doesn't, hard is for, easy to say, hard to do sometimes for us, isn't it? But he followed that pattern, and he was undefeated, one of the most victorious soldiers of all time. But what I didn't see him do you know, I don't have this whole thing memorized, I'll admit you. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor, but I didn't see him stand on the rooftop one day and go, 
hey, there's a beautiful naked woman down there. Hey, Lord, what do you think about me going down there and having affairs with her? That's my friend's wife, by the way. Do you think I should go down there and just take her for my own? I don't, I, is that in there, Pastor? I, 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 don't, I don't see that part. He didn't stay on the curb, did he? He went out and ventured out on his own. And that event was very, if you, if you study David's life, he has these miraculous highs and some idiotic lows. He, he has some, how is this guy this awesome and this stupid? It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But it was because he did it by his flesh. Because if he would have sought the word of God, he would have saw where it said, do not covet your neighbor's wife. That's in there too. That's in there too. Yes, you will be victorious because you're trusting in me. Woo, we like that one. But flip a few pages. Do not covet your, your uh, neighbor's wife and plot evil and have him killed and go this whole route. He didn't seek, he didn't stand on what the Lord, because if he had, I think we can agree, the Lord probably would have said, no, that's not a good, get yourself off the roof and get back inside and quit even looking down there. Right? Because in Matthew, Jesus says, you've heard that you shall not have an affair. I say you shall not even look at upon another woman with lust. All right? I got to take that one too. And that's what I got to build my life on. That's what I got to build my life on. Early on in my Christian walk, one guy that was, had been a Christian was talking, he, tried, he was saying something, a very long story, that it was okay to window shop. You know, a, a pretty woman walked by. I said, that's not what my Bible says. <laughs> I said, you're, 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 supposed to be an, you're supposed to be an elder, a more mature man at this. No. It says right here, don't even look at another woman. Right? I got to take the yes and the No. I got to take them equally with the same obedience, the same intensity, the same anticipation, the same expectation of them coming to pass as the ones I'm really excited about, okay? And I want to give us a quick, um, a quick scriptural look. Go back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 42. Super quick backstory. God was upset with the people of, of Israel and he kept saying, if you don't repent, you don't repent, I'm gonna bring trouble. And sure enough, he, he brings in uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylon, the Chatelains. He comes in, he's wiping out Jerusalem, wiping out Judah, just, just, just cleaning house. And he told them. He'd been telling them for years and years and years and years, straighten up or this is gonna happen. And so he's doing it. But there was a little remnant left that was left there in Judah. And... I'm trying to just give you the quick backstory, and then I'm going to read quite a few scriptures to, to tell this. But so they they come to Jeremiah the prophet, and Jeremiah was the prophet at the time that had been going to the people, saying, "Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord." So they they knew enough to come to him as the man of God, and so th this is where we pick up um, 42 Jeremiah 42 verse one. Then all the commanders of the forces, um, I'm getting to that point, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, Johanan, the son of, of if, I, if I say it wrong, it's because it's blurry, I didn't read it right. <laughs> Jezariah, the, the son of Hushah, and all the, pe all the whole group, <laughs> all the people, both small and great, approached and said to Jeremiah the prophet, please let our petition come before you and pray for us to the Lord your God. That is for all this remnant, because we are left but a few out of many, as your own eyes now see us. Let the Lord your God may tell us the way which we should walk in the thing that we should do. Yeah. Okay? Pretty good right there. We're, chaos is all around us. There's war. There's famine. There's people are dying right and left. We're all that's left. Tell us what we, what we should do. Which way should we even go? Okay? So at this point, they're doing good. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I am going to pray to the Lord your God in accordance with your words, and I will tell you the whole message which the Lord will answer you. I will not keep back a word from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, may the Lord be true and faithful witness against us 
if we do not do in accordance with the whole message which the word, the Lord your God, will send to us. So they're saying, may, may, may the Lord deal with us if we don't listen to what he says. Okay, let's keep going. Watch this. Whether it is pleasant or unpleasant, we will listen to the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we are sending you so that it may go well with us when we listen to the voice of the Lord our God. Lord, tell us what we should do, which way we should even walk, and whatever you tell us, pleasant or unpleasant, we know it's gonna go well if we listen to it. We know it's gonna go well, okay? I'm gonna skip around and for time's sake, Jump down to nine. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, sorry, Jeremiah went and prayed and, the, and then came back and said to them, thus says the Lord God of Israel to whom you sent me to present your petition before him. If you will indeed stay in this land, then I will build you up and not tear you down. And I will plant you and not uproot you. For I will relent concerning the calamity that I have inflicted on you. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon whom you are now fearing. Do not be afraid of him, declares the Lord, for I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand. I will also show you compassion so that he will have compassion on you and rescue you, or sorry, restore you to your own soil. But watch this. But if you are saying, going to say, we will not stay in this land so as not to listen to the voice of the Lord your God, saying no, but we will go to the Land of Egypt, where we will not see war or hear the sound of trumpet or hunger for bread, and we will stay there. Then in that case, listen to the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. If you really set your mind to, eat, to enter Egypt and go in uh, to reside there, then the sword which you are afraid of will overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine about which you are anxious will follow closely after you in Egypt, and you will die there. I like the other word better. <laughs> I will save you. I will grow you. I will, I will do all these great things for you. Or I'll kill you. Why did he tell them that? He knew their hearts. He knew what they wanted to do. Okay? And if you want some extracurricular reading, read all of 42 and into 43, I'm going to jump down to Jeremiah 43 real quick, and we'll see what happened. But as soon as Jeremiah, who the Lord their God had sent, had finished telling all the people and all the words of the Lord their God, that is all these words, Azariah the son of Hoshiah, Johanna, all those guys again, and the arrogant men said to Jeremiah, you are telling a lie. The Lord God did not send you to say to us, you are not to enter Egypt and reside there. But Barak, the son of Nera, is inciting you against us to give us over into the hand of the Shadowlands so they will put us to death or exile us to Babylon. And just, I'll give you the, I'll ruin the ending. They went to Egypt and they all died. They went to Egypt and they all died. They were so caught up in their fears of who was running the land and what they saw going on, all the chaos, all the crazy, all the waves that were all around them, they were so caught up in that, that regardless if they said, whatever the Lord says, we will do it and we know it'll be awesome. No, we're so, they, they had already set their minds to go to Egypt. Have we ever said, hey God, I got this plan I'm going to pray to you. If you would just get on board with this plan, it, it would be really cool. I'm sure y'all, I've never done that. Ever. I don't know. I, I was, I'm a five-time pro at it. Okay? This is what I want to do. Why don't you get on board with that? No. <laughs> Pleasant or unpleasant. And they go. But they were so caught up in it. But go, when, if you go back to 42 verse 11... He says, do not be afraid of the king of Babylon. 
He was telling them, don't be afraid of the guy that's in charge. Don't be afraid of all the nonsense going on. Don't be afraid of all the calamity, all the stuff that's going on around you. Don't be afraid of that. I got you. I will save you. I will... Guys, I get it. I can tell by the look on some of your faces. Steve, it's crazy out there. I know it is. But he says, don't fear that. Don't fear that. Don't buy into that. Don't let the... The, 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 the stirring of the fear and the lies and the falsehood. Don't go outside. You're going to get sick and die. Don't buy into all that. Don't buy into that because that's, that's not what my Bible says. That's not what my Bible says. Our, true story. Me and a couple other guys from the church I was at many years ago. We literally had to counsel a guy out of depression. Basically locked himself in his house. The first time President Obama got elected. Okay. I know, I know. It's a whole nother sermon. Okay. Um, but he had, same thing. He had bought into this. He just started, I mean, he was just ranting and raving and you're just saying, you know, I'm a small business owner and this, this is going to wreck the country. He's evil, this, blah, 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 whatever. And we're all going to be eating out of dumpsters. Must have said it a hundred times. You know what? And I said, you know what? I can't guarantee you that you're not right. I can't guarantee, you know, I can't guarantee you that you're not right. But here's what my Bible says. The righteous shall never hunger. The righteous shall never go thirsty. My daddy owns a thousand on a cattle hill, or a thousand hills, my Bible says. My king has promised to protect me. My king has promised to provide for me. Those who call upon my name and trust in the Lord shall never hunger. My Bible tells me stories about when God's people were hungry. Bread fell from the sky. Birds dropped meat on the ground. So I told him, I said, you know what? I can't promise you that that's not the case. He never promises the big golden American dream. But what he promises me is if I go to that dumpster, there's going to be some food in there. Okay? My God's going to take care of that. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's coming on us. It doesn't matter what we're facing. And here's the thing, guys. Like I said earlier, my obedience doesn't sway the truth. My understanding doesn't sway the truth either. I might not have to understand how it's going to work. He never says, oh, when you figure this out, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> no, he doesn't say that. He says, trust in the Lord. Yeah. Trust in the Lord. And just like in, in, in the verses in Matthew, the waves are going to come. It's not a matter of whether the waves are coming or they're not coming. It doesn't matter. They're going to come crashing. And they're going to keep coming crashing. And they're going to crash. But when I stand in his might, and I stand on his truth, and I choose to base my life upon what his word and what he tells me, when I choose to do that, I'm going to still be standing. I'm going to still be standing. It would have appeared that the wave of death had crashed over my Savior. It would have appeared that way. But when that stone rolled back and that wave washed back out to sea, my Savior's still standing, amen? amen. My yeah. Savior's still standing. So when he tells me, yes, all right, Lord. When he tells me no, all right, Lord. Now let me, let, me, let me stay on the curb. Let me stand where you told me to stand. When he says go, all right. When he says stay, see, <laughs> that's the trouble. That's the one I have trouble with. Wait, be still. Oh, but Lord, you, you know me. You created me. You made me to be a, a, a doer, a mover, a shaker, a goer, clear the path. Well, I want you to wait. No. <laughs> I'm not good at that. He says, I know. That's why you need me. 
I need you to sit and wait. And if you do, it will go well for you. I've tried it. I've put myself out in harm's way. And my house fell. Amen. So whatever you got going today, whatever's coming crashing against you, don't let fear knock you down. Don't let, and, and, and it might not be a bad thing. It's just a simple thing. Should I make that career change? What do you say, Lord? What should I do? Should I start that ministry? Should I serve in this ministry? Should I do this? Should I give to that? <laughs> should I buy new golf clubs or not? <laughs> See, I like the yes there. I wasn't so crazy about the no. But it's the same. It's his word. I promise you, if I'd have went out and bought new golf clubs, it probably wouldn't have gone well for me. <laughs> we got a big couch, but it's not that comfy. <laughs> I'm picking on Gretchen because she's not here. But here's the other thing, guys. Maybe your harbor's calm. Maybe, maybe there's no storms crashing against right now. Awesome. Praise God. Enjoy the time. Stand up bright and tall and let your light shine all the way out there for all of those lost at sea to know where the safe harbor is. Come here and you can find stability. Come here, you can find peace. Amen. Will you guys stand with me? Father God, we praise your holy name. I am so comforted. I am so encouraged and just inspired to know that it's not up to me. It's not up to my might. It's up to you, Father God, that you have your people, that you desire to protect us, to build us, to provide for us. And through you, we can still be standing, no matter what the world tries to throw at us. And every head bowed and eyes still closed. If you're here today and you say, man, I've been standing on some unstable ground. The things that I've based myself, what I stand on, are they're not proven to stand the test of time. And it's overcoming me. Today, you can, you can step over and stand on the rock. Or maybe you knew, like, like my children, you know to stand here. But instead, you've put yourself out. You've put yourself out into harm's way. And you tried it your way. But today's that day that you say, you know what? I'm switching everything I do back to you, Lord. I'm switching everything I do. I want to pray with you. And if that's you online, I want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. But if that's you, just do me a favor. Raise a hand just so we can know. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's awesome. Praise the Lord. Oh, Father God. Say this with me. Father God. Thank you for your son, Jesus, that laid his life that I might live with you forever. I admit that I'm a sinner and I need him as my savior. I confess that he died and rose again to pave a way for me to be with you. Help me, Lord, to stand in your might. Help me, Lord, to know your word. Come in not only and be the Savior, but the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the prayer team, yes, give him praise. Give him praise. I'm going to ask the prayer team to come on down. And here, I want to challenge you. Don't run off just yet. We're not quite done. 
I want to challenge you to come down and pray with these guys. There's not a person in here that doesn't have at least some ankle high waves, <laughs> okay? You might not have the ones crashing over the top of your head, but I guarantee you everyone in here has got something that they need to take to the Lord and say, should I go or should I stay? Yes or no? So we're gonna dismiss, but, but if, if you don't have something, that's fine. Go ahead and be dismissed, but come down and pray with these people. They're prayed up. They wanna, they wanna engage that opportunity with you. So, Father God, we praise you. We thank you for all you do for us. Bless us. Let us be those lights that shine to those that are seeking your safe harbor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You guys are dismissed. Thanks again for tuning into our podcast. If you accepted Christ today, we are so excited for you. We want to invite you to text BORN AGAIN to 31996. We know that God has an incredible future for you, and we cannot wait to walk alongside you. If you would like to support this podcast and the ministry at The Light, you can give online at thelightcf.org. We love you, Light family. Have a great week.